And we are live. Hello and welcome to Developer Insights. I'm David. And I'm Justin. And together we are the leads on game development and design here at Codename. Well, not only that, we also founded Codename too. And we're going to be your hosts for this episode and, of course, every episode. That's true, because when we're not here, the show doesn't happen. As per last week. Yeah. Uh, today is our 122nd episode. Mm. And I can see that you survived your vacation. Yes, I am back from my trip. <laughs> so, uh, what's new? What did you guys get up to here while I was gone? Mm, nothing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. This is a very exciting place. Well, I see <laughs> that the the dragon's head is still here. Yeah, we didn't we didn't have the resources to move the dragon's head. That's that's good. Yeah. I see your creativity is still on vacation. Hey, man, it takes two people to write an intro script. Uh, that's a good point. Anyway, today we are here to answer your development and design questions about idle champions. That's true. If you don't ask any questions, however, you may have to suffer through Justin's one-man reenactment of a six-hour flight with his young children. Oh, no. No, don't make me relive that. Please. Oh, it's not me. It's them. They're the ones who ask the questions. Ask questions. Please, <laughs> ask questions. Yeah. All right. Anyway, <laughs> as always, we have pulled forward some questions from last week's show, well, the previous show, I suppose, uh, and we will answer some of those while we wait for new ones to come in, as well as I have a brief update on items that we had flagged to get looked at by the dev team. So with any, uh, without any further stalling for time, uh, let's look at those. OK. <clears throat> so we do have a few items this week uh, that went in. Uh, some of them are in a build already, and some of them are going to be in the next build. And that includes that the healing pigments, pigments uh, will affect temporary HP. Uh, we're adding a clear indication on uh, Penelope showing that her item contribution to the Chewinga Mask tools for the job uh, to clearly see that it is pre or post stack. Which one is it, Justin? Is it pre mm. or post? OK. Um, apparently, uh, up until this, her currently her upgrades didn't even correctly show up in the formations tab, so that's mm, a yes. good fix. Um, the Daddy's release date has been fixed. And uh, we are we have added a fix that was requested, I believe, last week's or last episode, um, that we are going to hide the fire breath potions, the expired ones, uh, from the modern automation setup, so that you can't accidentally use those. Whoopos! Uh, not that you'd ever use those. Apparently, you're just going to hoard, hoard those forever. Forever. Yep. And we did confirm that offline progress does cap at seven days, um, but after the seven days, on your last run, it will actually run out the remainder of the time and give you offline gold progress for that. <laughs> so it does cut you at seven days of like actual like adventure progress and, and resets, resets and stuff. But it will at that point then whatever the remaining time gets turned into offline gold. So like a year's worth of grinding yeah. in area ten. That's right. Gets yeah. you twenty five gold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as I think that brought it was brought up um, two weeks ago as well. Yes, and I it was that. not in fact it is not in fact broken. It does in fact cut you off at uh, at seven days. All right. Uh, I do have quite a, a very extensive in-progress list, list of things that uh, we pulled from the shows to get no, looked you at. I don't. It's empty. <laughs> yes. I only <laughs> pulled one item in <laughs> because I'm not sure where the, the list has gotten so long uh, that we could spend 20 minutes going down the list. Um, but one of the major items that is being currently worked on uh, is a bench builder feature, which is to improve being able to swap champions between seats and see what uh, all of the different sort and filter options on that are, uh, so you can actually find champions that you're looking for. And that is well underway, um, and I'm not exactly sure. I don't have a, a solid ETA on it yet, but it's at the point where 2024. Yeah, okay, I yes. feel confident saying that. We will be looking at it <laughs> internally uh, quite soon um, for review and then, and then making final changes before Give we get to an out. artist, maybe, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely looking forward to that one. Doesn't look like I have any announcements today. And are our mods Gabe and Mars? Uh, or is it just Gabe today? I don't know. Did Mars? I thought I erased this before we started. Mm. I'm pretty sure Mars is there. All right. Mars is always there. <laughs> How can we possibly do a show without Mars? Mars, are you there? Mars? Give us a sign. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He's Wait, there. I can see who's he's in, in the, the document. Doc, yeah. He's right there. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. He's given us a sign. Now that we've wasted everyone's time. I'm <laughs> here. <laughs> what do you need? <laughs> we just wanted to make sure you were the mod today. We just wanted to say oh. hi, Mars. Yep. OK. <laughs> Next question. Wait, no. First question. Leftover from last week's. Why do I keep saying that? Leftover from the show previous, two weeks ago. Uh, it's 
is from Rough Rider 1995, uh, asking, can you confirm that Gale will always be included in the Elminster chests? Yes, I can. And yes, he will be. Perfect. Next question. This is from Peculiar Head. Okay. Uh, honest question. What made you want to create this game? D&D fans, I'm assuming. But clearly there's more than that as to why. Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Uh, I saw this one last week, but we couldn't quite get to it. Um, or not last week, last episode. You did it too, we're Just fine. assume that if we say last week, we mean last episode. Um, but the, uh, I mean, the, the genesis of, of Idol Champions is really from our previous game, which was Crusaders of the Lost Idols, uh, which is a very similar kind of idol mechanics uh, with the formation building and the champions and events coming uh, out every so often and having new champions and stuff in them. Every so often? Every so you often. On a mechanical cadence? On a, on a, on a very <laughs> specific cadence, yes. Um, and, and so we, we had made that and we were having uh, some amount of success with that and we were all fans of, of D&D &D here, yep. uh, especially our, our CEO, CEO yep, Eric, who, huge fan. Uh, <laughs> who tracked down uh, several wizards employees and, and leapt out of closets at them. Um, <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to tell them that, Justin. Uh, I don't okay. think that's... Uh, he did not... That definitely, definitely didn't happen. He definitely happen. didn't hide in the closet and ambush someone outside of a conference room. At a, I don't uh, think a closet was involved. I think you're like embellishing sure. that. Okay, anyway. I'm sure it was a refrigerator. Anyway, we <laughs> eventually we eventually uh, convinced wizards uh, to give us a shot and, uh, and that's where Idol Champions came from. And uh, I think we're pretty happy with what happened with all Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah Turned Wizards out right. is pretty happy, so we're all we're all pretty happy. Everyone's and happy. If we were really happy, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> well. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. I think you knocked that one out of the park, Justin. I think I did yeah. really well at that yeah. one. That was yeah. a great answer. Thank you, Dave. Next question. <laughs> uh, this is from Maelstrom7737. Uh, with upcoming champion design, will variant restrictions uh, and being included in Elminster variants be considered? So this is an interesting question. It's basically, are we going to like think deeply about how a champion impacts Elminster's meta with each design? And I think the answer to that is, I, mean, I hope yes. the answer isn't no. It's, it's <laughs> yes and no. I mean, to a certain extent, we kind of like we don't. We'll, we'll consider sort of some of the implica implications on Elminster, like for example with um, um, with Gale, like we considered that in three years he'll be the only absolute adversary available in Elminster, so that's why we put the Ceramorphosis uh, as a spec and not as a base ability, because otherwise that whole base ability would be useless in Elminster, and his whole shtick is that he is allowed in every Elminster patron variant. Um, so there's some things like that that we, that we take into consideration when they're big things. Other things like where's this champion going to fit into the meta of the champions from the last three years. I don't know that we'll spend a lot of time thinking about that. We'll kind of leave that for, for players to find kind of cool combinations. Just like when we're designing any particular champion, we don't specifically think about how that champion is going to interact with all of the 120 whatever uh, previous Wait, champions that there are. No. Oh, okay. It turns out we do not have <laughs> infinite time. <laughs> So, you know, we think about the high level stuff, we think about sort of where is this champion's kind of niche going to be, but we don't necessarily spend um, a lot of time thinking about all of the possible com all of the possible combinations. I think I actually worked it out uh, when uh, yeah, we were joking, I was joking with Mars one time and I actually worked out the number of how many possible formations there are. Mm, uh, mm. and it is it's definitely higher it's than the number, number of yeah. atoms <laughs> in the universe. So, uh, we were making a joke because we wanted Mars to do power testing on every single every possible, champion yeah. in every possible formation um, for the purpose of being able to tell the difficulty of a given adventure. Mm. And uh, it turned out it would take uh, it would take him more time than uh, is physically possible yes. in uh, as many lifetimes as you could physically get before the heat death of the universe. I thought that's <laughs> might might be where you were going with the <laughs> difficulty testing because that's part of the reason why that number is. Not as accurate as people would like it to be. <laughs> That's a very polite way of saying <laughs> it's crappy. That's true. <laughs> um, okay. It's on our list to fix, though. <laughs> okay. That's a very difficult problem to it solve. It is a very difficult problem to solve. Yes. But we can make it better, if not perfect. Well, we can't make it perfect, but we can make it better. Anyway, 
Let's move on to some questions yeah, from from today, uh, from this week's episode. Yeah, or last week. No, this. No, if we're getting that off by one. If last week's was if, if two <laughs> weeks ago was last week, then this week's is next week's. Okay, let's look at some questions from next, next week's, week's episode. episode. Right, perfect. Okay, <laughs> starting uh, first question out of the gate was from Fewer Pills. Is uh, going to be from. Oh yes, right. Of course, it's <laughs> going to be from Fewer Pills. Uh, can you change <coughs> uh, FW Tier Three Fortunes Wheel Fortunes Wheel Tier Three Global Blessing? 10% uh, more Modron XP is guaranteed useless Wow! for everyone that can reach it because it's barely possible with area 2,000 gold farming in many runs uh, plus conversions, gold bugs, and conversions and gold bugs. Uh, feels worse than just having 100% damage buff. Yeah, uh, so I don't think we're going to change it at this time. There is uh, a plan for, for Modron cores, and I know we've, we had... We haven't had any questions f about it in a while, but uh, there were questions before <coughs> about you know over leveling Modron cores and, and uh, benefits from that, and so um, there is uh, a plan at uh, at some point to implement a system like that. Uh, at which point, I think that uh, extra Modron XP could be useful, um, especially with like soft cap increases and other stuff that make getting to uh, tier three. Um, Fortune's Wheel Blessings a little bit easier. Um, and of course, over time, as you, you convert your event favor and stuff like that, that'll, that'll also make that easier. So it's, 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 a, longer, it's a longer run for, uh, for that. Um, maybe we need to make that percentage higher or, or adjust something there. But uh, in general, I, I think the bonus will be useful at some point. Uh, just potentially not right now. I, I agree, right now it doesn't seem super useful. Okay. Next question. This one is from New Mantis. Uh, can the Modron Core automation buff icon, the one by the potion manager, uh, change to the icon of the core you've currently got equipped in the active party, rather than always being the modest core icon? Uh, yeah, I think we can, we can do that. Seems like yeah. seems like something we could do. We could try. Uh, it's, uh. It, yeah, it seems pretty doable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. First item of the day highlighted. Next question. Uh, this one is from uh, our favorite three animal. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, Meow Arf Moo. Uh, asking, uh, is there a way to recall all champions that have been added to other parties but are not actually in a formation? It is a bit tedious to work on building out a needed party only to switch to another party and have to recall any champions that had been added. A 30 plus clicks to recall a full team that's not actually being used is to arf for meow to <laughs> moo. Ah, uh, you got to the part which is the reason I highlighted the question. <laughs> that, that's the that. only reason? It's to arf for meow to moo. Well. Um, <coughs> So I think this, this does tie in a little bit into the bench builder, which I think will hopefully make um, sort of putting together your formation and doing that recall uh, a little bit easier. Yeah. I, I assume yeah. we'll work some recall stuff in there. So if you select champions that are in other formations, that it will automatically recall them all at the same time when you uh, when you apply the party. Apply the way, the party. Yeah. The way it's yeah. currently working is you'll drag all of the champions into a new form or into a new bench, and then when that's applied, it will then pull anyone yeah. in that needs yeah. to be pulled in with, with yeah. you know just one one warning box to click instead of yes. you know yeah. Yeah. Uh, instead of 10 if you're pulling in everyone from other formations um, so yeah uh, hopefully we'll have something that uh, that will help out with that and uh, and we will see uh, we'll revisit this after we've got that out into the world I see they're still talking in the chat about the number of formations. I don't think they're considering the formation structures. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's an added complication there, and that's the actual formation layouts and yes. how they're connected. Yes, yeah. yes. There's, 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 there's so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot. Uh, OK, the next question here is from Emote. This one's for you. Oh. Uh, Emote says, ignore if this has already been mentioned at the start. It has not already been mentioned. Uh, is there any update on being able to open more than 50 bounties at a time? It is on the top of the second list. Oh. How much stuff is on the first list? <laughs> <laughs> there are, are we doing all of the first list no. stuff before we get to the second no. list? No. There are two There are two lists. There are uh, lists of things that should be uh, 
quite easy to, to do and ah. the things that are slightly more complex to do. Mm -hmm. And I know the 50 boundary contracts was on the this should be easy to do list, mm -hmm. and Peter moved it from that list it should be easy. to you just the take more complex you, you, you list. Control F and for the code base, you search for the number 50. <laughs> yeah, and you change it. And then to you just change it to something higher. Mm, like 51. Uh, uh, probably a little bit okay. higher than that. Uh, but yeah, it seems pretty yes, easy to me. It is definitely still on the. And I say it is actually literally on the top of the the more complex list. I know Peter ran into an issue with uh, grouping all of the the um, the actual like uh, gold icons and stuff that fall. Um, that that particular system was more complex than he had initially thought it was, and so it sort of threw a wrench in getting that to work, just sort of as a quick change. Um, so that's why it got moved up to that list. But it is still on the list, and it is definitely going to get um, tackled at some point in the near future. OK. Next question. <laughs> 51 would be such a good April Fool's joke. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, oh, I can, I can ask you this one. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, you'll, you'll answer it anyway. Uh, sure. Numantis, I'm going to answer it anyway. <laughs> no, I mean, you'll answer it the same answer <laughs> okay. I give. Uh, Numantis asks, uh, is there any chance that the reset and start objective functionality that we've got uh, on the main map with events uh, could be extended into trials? You should probably have a look at what happens when you use that button while you're currently in a patron variant, too. I thought we fixed the patron stuff. Yeah, I thought so, too. Hmm. Anyway, the, the idea of extending that to uh, to other usages, though, I think is. I know uh, that got you very excited. Oh, it seemed like a, a nice shortcut. Very, cut. very excited. Of course, there is a trials re rework coming, which should. Well, I mean, coming is a. <laughs> it's a. It's, well, it's you're coming that eventually. One back a little bit, huh? Well, it's not coming, you know, anytime soon. It's like ninth on the list of of nine things. That, well, eighth actually on the list of nine things I'd like to do in the game in the next couple of years. Yeah, we have a lot of lists here, as it turns out. <laughs> we like lists. <laughs> lists are important. Code name lists. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's slightly better than writing it on a sticky note and putting it up on a board in no particular order. That's true. Yeah, because then they they get up there long enough, they fall off, and then yeah. Like but I think to, to answer the, the question of uh, extending the restart and start or reset and start objective uh, functionality from events into other systems Early and other places, uh, I think <laughs> I think is definitely <laughs> something um, that I would like to do. And actually, I'm just going to highlight that in uh, in yellow so that we don't forget to put that onto the list if it's not already on one of the lists on the first, second, or third list. Now the third list is that. That's confident. <laughs> There's no third list. <laughs> third list is the list of things we said we'd put on the list, but we'll actually never do. We'll never tell you what's on that list. All right, next question. This one is from uh, Zavian. What? It's Dev Insights. We're <laughs> 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 on Dev Insights. We switched over to the uh, mm. to the other to spelling. The, to the other spelling. The other spelling of insights now. Anyway. Yes, we're playing homonyms. Yeah. Uh, right, next question. This is from uh, Zavian2018. Uh, 12 months ago, oh boy, <laughs> uh, you said you wanted speed champion abilities to work in background parties and for offline progress. Has there been any progress on that? Uh, so I still want <laughs> speed champion abilities to work in background parties uh, and for offline progress. Has there been any progress on that? I don't. Think so. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure sort of what progress has been made backwards into champions that have speed abilities. I know mm -hmm. that it has been a priority to make sure that any ability that works, uh, that, that any more complicated complex ability does work in offline mode mm -hmm. uh, as part of the QA testing. So for more recent champions, that should be something that does work. And for the ones that are on the backlog, I don't think anyone in, in particular or anyone specifically is assigned to be going back and looking at those at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's tough because speed champions are unlikely to uh, get flagged for reworks mm. because well, we generally flag rework champions, ones that are not used, and speed champions uh, get used a lot. So they don't generally bubble up to the top of that priority list. Um, with that said, so I, with that, yeah, with that said, I should check in um, with Nathaniel about our next speed champion and make sure that uh, Who's she is this? properly uses the, oh. Shandy's dash might work for your account, but it's not guaranteed. And no, we don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> who wrote that? That's the, the lurking writer wrote well, that, yeah, it's obviously. He's quoting it from somewhere. <laughs> OK. 
Next oh, question. Yes. I would still like speed things to work. It's just more complicated than going in and updating a, a 50 yeah. to be a higher number. And that's on the more complex list. All right, next question. This is from Emote. Uh, has Modron Core XB been fixed to not overflow when reaching the max integer value? Some of my cores are getting precariously close, and I'm worried they might start to break. Uh, I feel like I talked to Peter about this the last. I think this came up before, and I think I talked to Peter about it, and and he said he was going to look at it, uh, but uh, I don't know. I will highlight this and uh, and get a confirmation of it, though. OK. Oh, the looking writer says it's, it's their quote. Uh, it's based on things that I've said, you've said, and Chris Dupuy have said. Okay. See, I, I thought that Shandy's Dash, Shandy's Dash, I think, worked in the old version of offline progress, where it was looking at speed modifiers. I'm mm. not sure if Mark's rewritten version uh, maintained that functionality. Mm. Um, yeah, then if speed potions and the game speed known in the fast core do work, then you'd think that Shandy's dash should work because it's the same, it's the same thing. But uh, yeah, we'll have to look into that. Uh, next question here is from Meow Arf Moo again, uh, or as I often read it, Mio Warf Moo. <laughs> uh, don't know why okay. my brain puts it together in that way. Maybe I've watched a lot of. Uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation, and so I'm looking for like Worf. Oh, I see. It, but it's not Mio War. Mio Fmu. Mio Worf Mu. Anyway, uh, their question is: Why is the default area set to 25 on the uh, potion formation screen in Modern Animation? I think. I think uh, so. That's also, my read too, but I'm not. Can we set the default to one? Why? Why, is why was 25 chosen? I'm sure a lot of thought went into this. So can you tell us exactly why? <laughs> I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I remember that was a long time ago now. I think there was some concern that we didn't want potions to be immediately used in case a reset occurred, and then you wanted to cancel, like you wanted to, to, to stop the progress. Now, obviously, if you're selecting that, then I mean, you can set it to something that you felt was a, an appropriate number to use that that potion at but i think it was because i think it was it was not one by default to avoid sort of initial immediate use of the potion um at least i think that was the reasoning at the time um i think 25 might have just been like you're up to speed at that point mm -hmm. I, I don't think 25 as the number itself maybe five would have been fine as well but i think i think it was just giving a little the intention was to give a little bit of padding so that you didn't start the next adventure with a reset and just immediately lose a potion mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to then sort of interrupt that Modron core and have it do something different. But um, so I mean, on that note, it's probably why we, we won't set it to one um, as the default. Um, but we could lower it down. Mm -hmm. I, don't know. Yeah, I think there's sort of five the, seems uh, like it would make sense. The potion having familiars on the potion manager um, kind of play into this a little bit too, because if you had those in place on your automation, then it makes this a little less, like that That can now happen. It would immediately use potions when mm -hmm. you start the adventure. Um, so I suppose if you don't want that to happen, yeah. I think, I mean, I wonder, if I think I wonder how much of, that's <laughs> happening, actually. <laughs> I think part of this issue is, I mean, we just people, especially people who are doing a lot of resets and getting a lot of gems and, and getting a lot of chests and stuff, they're, they're not going to really be running out of potions. Mm. So, you know, if you, if you use one of your 10,000 extra small potions um, <laughs> yes. when you didn't want to, you're probably not going to be opening a ticket asking for compensation. But, right. yeah. Okay. Let us move on to the next question, which is also. Oh, yeah, let me yeah. scroll back up here. Uh, this question is from Garwar, who says, uh, I found out how to toggle event boons on and off, but only because I dug around and clicked on the right thing. Any way to make this a bit more intuitive for people, or at least let them know where to toggle them from the adventure screen? Mm. Any way to make it more intuitive? Any way? Mm. I can't think of any. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree. Um, I think that probably uh, should be indicated on um, from the adventure screen. Probably indicated on the actual tooltip that comes up with all of the buffs, showing them there. Um, just because, I mean, it's a it's a good point. It is buried inside of the buffs, inside of the boon screen, which is inside of the event screen. And it may not be obvious that you can actually click into that and get details on those. So, um, 
so yeah, I, I think at least an indication on um, the the actual tooltip showing the buffs that says, hey, you can turn these off um, and potentially click it, I suppose, because I think that tooltip stays up once you hover over it so that you can do like sub hovers on the items that are in there. Mm -hmm. um, so we could probably actually have a link to it right from there. Hell, we could probably have it turn it on and off right from there. All right, I'll, I'll tag this and I'll take a look at it. Do -do -do. Highlighted. All right, next question. Uh, this one is from Fewer Pills. Uh, question part one of two. Oh boy, it's got you two. You only have to do part one of two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, <coughs> there are a bunch of variants that are marked as not playable with specific patrons. However, they are possible nowadays with champions that force themselves or others in and are also playable with Elminster, even if they indicate a specific champion that wouldn't be available normally and gets fo forced in. Uh, for example, taking responsibility, which forces Ashara in, but isn't playable with Mert and Vaja, even though she could be forced in there too. Can you check all of these? Yeah, this is actually something that we were discussing um, this morning because um, it had come up. There was a, a, a Elminster variant that uh, locked out a bench slot every 25 or 50 or something like that areas. And uh, you got to the point where by area 400, you had no more bench slots available and couldn't put any champions in them. And uh, obviously, there's a couple of other variants that function in this way as well, where, um, where uh, like uh, slots in the formation get filled with, with escorts over time. And you have to do the last 600 areas or whatever with, uh, with no champions in the formation. And it, it sort of came up that um, there's a bunch of sort of older variants that function in this way because we didn't anticipate having the higher area requirements. And then there's also you know, uh, older variants that we had previously made uh, not available for a patron because you know, under the old rules uh, of, uh, of the game, you couldn't put any champions in on those adventures. Um, but as you say, what you know, the modern meta has a bunch of champions that are available in, uh, in every adventure. Uh, and depending on the, the patron in, in every adventure and a patron or just in every adventure in general. And so I think we're, I've, I've got a to-do <laughs> to thing on my list to basically go through and check all of the variants that are currently flagged as not available in a given patron and decide whether or not to uh, adjust that flag. Um, and, and so that's something that we're going to be doing. I think this list that's in question part two um, is something that I can use to uh, help decide uh, which which variants we have to look at. Um, but uh, yeah, my I'm sort of leaning towards just saying screw it and just letting all uh, patron variants be playable since we've kind of broken that part of the, the restrictive, restrictive meta. Um, and that's, that's probably where we'll lean towards unless there's like a very specific, you know, one where you can't, there's just no way to get any champions onto the field whatsoever. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to take a look at that. But that's that's my current plan is to look through there and uh, and potentially just nuke all of the restrictive requirements. Hmm. I was enjoying this quote earlier, <laughs> the joke from the looking writer of it's buried in a menu in a tooltip that's in a list of a sub hover of an overlay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, How is that's, it not yeah. easy to find? Ah, I don't understand these people. No, nope. <laughs> it's exactly where I would look for it. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. This is from Emote. Uh, how are the weekend golden epic champions decided? Uh, because it's strange that some brand new champions like Gale, Presto, Dinah Hare, Karlak, and Dark Urge are already up to three GEs, but there are some older champions who still only have two, or even just one. <gasps> how come uh, these ones aren't getting any love, <coughs> Justin? Well, let me tell you. Um, uh, Part of the calculus that goes into deciding which champions show up in a in a weekend promo and uh, which one gets the golden epic is uh, which champions are more popular. Yeah. Uh, because our figuring is, and stop me if I'm wrong here, oh. but the popular champions are the ones that people are using. Therefore, there's a higher chance that they'll that the the people using those will see a golden epic for them and decide that that's something they might like. 
and as a yep. company <laughs> that is <laughs> forced that's... is forced against our will to pay oh, no. people to, to to build this game. Uh, that's it. We're in trouble. This <laughs> we we do from time to time <laughs> make some of our decisions based off of what we think uh, will sell better. So yeah. It, Yes. We, we think those ones will sell better, so we'll uh, put them up. Dupuis picks them. Cool. Move on. <laughs> I could have just said Dupuis picks them. Throw them the bus. But, um, yeah. It's not a spoiler unless he tells it. <laughs> uh, yes, but I think the short answer is they're picked by the ones that are having the most usage. Yes, yeah. the most usage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's... Time for that. Oh my gosh! Your yeah. favorite time. I I completely forgotten that we do this every week. <laughs> I've been gone for well, not very long, but uh, it's time for our world famous. It is world famous because when I was down in Mexico, uh -huh. this guy pulled me aside. He said, "Hola, amigo. Uh, I've heard about your world famous giveaway that you do on your stream every week, and so uh, this is it. This is the giveaway okay. of forty two gold chests of your choice." Um, it can be any type of chest. If you win, it can be any type of chest you can uh, in the game. And the way you enter uh, is by typing in uh, the magic keyword into chat. Uh, this week it is welcome back, all one word. Uh, you just type that into chat and... Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, and, uh, and you will automatically be entered for a chance to, uh, to, to win. And if you win, you can pick any type of chest in the game. That's what I was getting at before, uh, before I remembered yes. how I'm supposed how to do this. How are you supposed to do this? Yeah. Uh, it, could be, it could be Modron component chests yep. if you want some more pipes. Um, it could be gold chests for, mm -hmm. for Gale or the Dark Urge or, or Dynahair if you like those champions, which I think uh, people yep. do. Uh, or the weekend promo say that people like them. <laughs> the the yeah. ones that the weekend promo say people like. Uh, or uh, what what the kind of what the what other kind of chests could it be? I mean, maybe it's a camouflage chest. You get a camouflage chest. Hmm. What about a horn chest? Hmm. Maybe a crane chest. Um, maybe it's a skyrocket chest. How about a cantaloupe chest? <laughs> a honeydew chest. Golden delicious chest. I also thought lizards when he started this. <laughs> <laughs> what about melons. a winter chest? Yes, it's melons. <laughs> There's a water chest. <laughs> <laughs> melons is the correct yeah, answer. Yeah, I mean, these all end in melons, so I kind of had to cut them off. Yeah. <laughs> There's a horned melon? That's what it says. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I see yeah. it. Golden prize melon. Oh, yeah, that looks, that looks like that would be uncomfortable to handle. Crenshaw melon? That's odd. Uh, <laughs> gawk melon. All right. Honey, yep. There are a lot Persian. of types of melons. That's Snap basically melon. what I uh, what I subsisted on down in Mexico is uh, cantaloupe and honeydew melon. We got a Yabari king melon. It looks like a cantaloupe, though. Hmm. Mm. Anywho, uh, let us move on to the next question. Right, right, right. What we're doing? Okay. <laughs> Questions. Right. Next question. <laughs> this is from Garwar. Melancholy. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Garwar <laughs> says, "I always look for the camouflage melons at the <laughs> store, but never see them." <laughs> ha. Yeah, you need a good eye for that. Next question. This one is actually also from Garwar. All right, uh, asking for champions that have secondary visual effects. Uh, for example, spirit, spirit form, Fen's ultimate form, etc. Is there a way to show that in the shop when viewing a skin pack? Uh, for some, that's part of why what they want to know about the skin before deciding on the purchase. Yeah, this is something that uh, so this is on a list. This is, I, I believe, one this of is the on lists. the list. It's oh. not on the third list. No, it's, it's on the on first or second. List. I think it's on the second list. Oh, um, but yeah, this is this is something that we we need to do. I think there's some metadata stuff that that needs to be added to the to the skins in order to make it work. Because um, we do show it for some of them, I want to <laughs> say, or we had we do have cases where it does show or it cycles between no. them on. Maybe it doesn't. I don't. I don't think. I think so. we just overlooked this one. I do that. Uh, OD17 says the, the mechanic exists in the shop. It's just very rarely used. That's so right. Maybe I it's thought a, we had. Maybe, maybe we have implemented it for some skins. The problem is every type of skin, like it has a different, like some have transformations and some have different forms, like when you're in your ultimate or like. Some are oily uh, and some, some are combination. Yeah. <laughs> and there's different types of melons. <laughs> um, 
<coughs> so I think just some of those have gotten set up. And even when some of those are set up, I think there's specific metadata that needs to be set up on the uh, in the skin data yeah, to actually have it. it go through to the store. So I'm not 100% sure why that isn't set up for all of them. But um, you know what? We're going we're gonna to highlight this one in yellow. And, uh, and try and get an update for you so okay. that we can, we can refresh the reason in our minds. All right, next question. This is from Emote. Uh, could human get a tabaxi glitch skin and feet? Three kittens in a trench coat <laughs> would be the best thing ever. <laughs> that, that would be awesome. And uh, I have a note here from Mars that he has already cross-posted it to our internal <laughs> suggestions <laughs> channel now. That's so right. that one doesn't even um, need to go onto one of our lists. There it's we go. already on the internal list. I like it. Yeah. OK, next question. This one is also from Garwar. Uh, you recently capped Titania's speed item. Good job. Well, OK. Uh, now, when are you going to do it for Melf, Vi, and Whittle? Um, that's a good question. I mean, so let me think about this. Uh, are they, these are all champions who increase spawn speed, I think. Does Vi increase spawn speed? How does Vi's Not speed sure. mechanic work? Oh, no, Vi's speed mechanic is a little bit unique. Um, but Melf and, and Whittle certainly increase spawn speed. And I, I guess technically there should be a cap for them since they, um, they have uh, Eventually, they, the monsters will spawn and then reach the place where they are damageable in one frame. Um, <laughs> but uh, you'd know about five. You'd finish the speed blog, Justin. Oh, <laughs> <sighs> uh, Melf has a couple of speed mechanics, doesn't he? He's got one that brings in more enemies. Now, if you had a speed mechanic, would you get the blog done faster? <laughs> yes, I would. Mm. Um, <laughs> Sorry, all I can think of is the end of the latest <laughs> Deadpool um, uh, and trailer? Wolverine trailer. Speaking of uh, speed mechanics, anyway, um, yeah, uh, I do have a. I, I actually have to look at a, an item cap after this stream okay. um, for a champion going out next week, so I can potentially <laughs> uh, add these to the list of things to look at and uh, and look at them. Okay. Next question. This one's from Garwar. Uh, now that seasons are on hiatus, what is the new delivery system for the new Mojon cores? That is a very good question. Stork. Um, <laughs> stork. <laughs> yes, Stork. You see, when one Mojon core <laughs> oh, no. and another Mojon core really love each other. Now, um, uh, so we don't have one quite yet. Uh, I was thinking for a little bit that they could potentially be like a tier four reward for a new champion or, or a reworked champion. Uh, I'm leaning away from that at this point just because of how long it is between uh, events when you could access those. And we wouldn't, if we put them as a tier reward, we definitely wouldn't put them into like wild offers or the gem shop or anything like that because we want to keep those tier rewards something that you really have to like have a lot of power in the game to get. Um, there is a system that is, I think, sixth on my list of nine to implement that I think would be a really good um, place to put these as a reward. Um, but I'm not anywhere close to being able ready to talk about that one, considering I still have to convince uh, this guy and, uh, and a couple of others <laughs> that it would be a good idea. Uh, oh, so no. <laughs> Six of nine. Yep. So at some point, um, yes, I would like to get, uh, <laughs> I would like to get uh, a, a new place for Modron cores to come from. And uh, that is on the sort of long-term roadmap uh, for the game, uh, just not on the short term right now. OK. Next question. This is from Loopy79. <clears throat> Can we get an additional or an addition to the collections patrons specific patron screen so that instead of only showing patron shop items, we could instead select between that and a screen to show all available champions for that patron? including those who can become available via a feat. And for Elminster specifically, can that screen show the date at which the champion will be no longer available for the Elminster variants? Yes, I think this is something that we, we should do um, on the collection screen. I think it's also something that we want to make um, visible on the champion profile. We want to show which patrons uh, a champion can be used for, which they can be used for with feats, and uh, when they will expire um, from Elminster's um, favor. 
uh, <laughs> as well. So yeah, there, there are some updates there with Elminster that we'd like to do. I did actually want to get some of these in uh, for Elminster's release because they're pretty obvious things that are, that are good quality of life features, but uh, they just, alas, did not make the cut. All right. Next question. This one is from a foolish genius eighty nine, uh, asking: Is it an intended feature to allow race changing feats to change the profile page to reflect that change when the character sheet when character sheets two point is implemented? Uh, yeah, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't want to uh, to have that indicated in some way um, when a when a, a race tag or um, uh, alignment or anything else that could potentially get updated gets updated by a feat. Um, probably want to show it in a specific way. To indicate I think we'd want to show changed, it. Yeah, we'd want to show it that it uh, to indicate that it's been changed, and and we want to be able to see what the original one was, um, so that you can see those options without having to uh, unequip the, the feet. feet off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Take off your so feet. yeah, I think that's definitely something to consider for character sheets 2.0. If I if I haven't already considered it. Uh, which I cannot remember because I haven't been here for <laughs> a week and a half, and, uh, and that's all it takes. Is my a week brain and a half. is mush. That is correct. You returned from your vacation. Your brain did not. It's still it's somewhere it, with it's, your creativity. It's stuck in customs. <laughs> <laughs> of a passport. Um, next question. <laughs> this is from. Well, I want to say Devil's Umbrella, but it's just Devil's Umbra. Yeah. Um. Asking, can we get an option to sort the TimeGate collections page by the highest area completed? Uh, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> We're yep. adding so many items to the list today. Yeah, you know what? We got to fill out those. This lists. is why I can't read the list at the top of the show. <laughs> well, we just got maybe list number one. I don't know. Mm. We got to start making better progress on those lists. No. Well, something like the um, formation builder or the the, the bench builder mm -hmm. is you know taking several weeks, and so we could take those sort of one. We could take two, 14 days to do uh, you know one feature, or we could do one feature a day and get fourteen things knocked off the list. Mm -hmm. We should do that first. A little triage. Okay. Next question. This no one comment. is from <laughs> Cyclops. Um, I mean, fair enough, but I do. <laughs> the bench builder is going to be a, a really a I, good I think so too. Yeah, yeah I agree. Next question from Cyclops. Why not release the seats of upcoming event ahead of time? Wow, I'm going to read this in a <laughs> non <laughs> Could you why please not read that in a more stilted manner? Yes. <laughs> why, not release, why not release the seats of upcoming event ahead of time so that new players can play accordingly or can plan accordingly with time gate pieces to fit uh, split the party? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Generally, we only start to talk about specifics of champions, um, sort of you know the week and a bit before. Like I think there's a couple of those, like the the champions for for next week's event. I think are going out either if they haven't already gone out today, it's today and tomorrow. I think for the two champions, so it'll have the seat for the new one, um, as well as which ones getting reworked. Um, I know which ones there. Oh, do you know they, which ones getting I reworked? I do. I think I, many people know which. I've ones seen the key art reworked. and everything. Yeah, it's good key art. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I mean, why don't we release the seats of upcoming? I think we're just trying to oh, to, to keep today, all yeah. of the the grama go up today. Yeah, that's what the chat today? says. So. Okay. Either and they're really good guessers, someone else, or <laughs> someone else goes up tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So it's the reworked one that went up today. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, good thing I didn't say their name <laughs> earlier in the stream because I was talking about a speed champion. Um, um. <coughs> uh, I mean, I. I don't really know what the, the I, I think the answer to this is just like the marketing kind of ramps up in that week leading up to the event. And so I think by by releasing sort of more information further out from that, we're kind of stepping on on marketing's toes in terms of, you know, trying to build the hype up close to the event. Yeah, I, I mean, the seat information may not necessarily be as big a giveaway, though. <laughs> that is also something that has historically, generally, generally it'll stay the same from, from sort of design to release, but it has at least once Switch. changed, changed. At almost the last minute. Mm. Um, we did that once with a champion where we did the power testing. Um, I think it might have been when Mars was doing power testing or back when I was kind of playing with things. And then we realized, like, wait a second, the, the formation we kind of designed this champion for um, 
th they don't have access. They are in the same seat as someone <laughs> that we were expecting them to be able to be used with. And so we had to kind of uh, very quickly at the last minute switch the seat. Hmm. Um, w but yeah, with that said, uh, it's only happened, I think, once in, in 100 and whatever champions. So. Yeah, uh -huh. I feel like a case like that, people would understand, especially if it was because that they needed to synergize with the champion that was in that seat. Mm. If you were moving them into a seat because you decided they were too powerful synergizing with the champion that was <laughs> in the seat you moved them into, yeah. then I think people might be a little more upset with you. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next question. This is from Tactitia T. Uh, when an event is going on, I can find the event page while doing a mission the page where you can see your event boons, your per-character progress towards variants, etc. But when you aren't actively on a mission at all, all you can see is the overall campaign map. This is confusing. I think they're asking to be able to bring to, up the to event bring up page the event, from the, the event campaign dialogue. map. Didn't, we, did, we didn't get that in? That was on the triage list from, from release. Admittedly, I haven't looked at it since. Yeah, but it feels uh, like because I know we had the seasons one on there, and we were like, just reuse the button. Wasn't there some no, sort of workaround we not get it on in? that? All right, I'm just gonna highlight it, and I will uh, find a dev to uh, to do that. <laughs> uh, Ledieth asks, as an aside, why do we have two event buttons? That's a really good question. Um, there's basically there's the event sort of there's uh, the event notification notification at the top of the screen, and then there's sort of the new style event thing down where the season button used to be. Um, and the reason we did that is because we wanted where the season button was to have the event, and we wanted to have that more called out, so that it was very clear that like the event thing was a very core feature of how you play the game. And if you're looking for something to do, go to the event thing and do stuff there. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, we didn't want people who were used to accessing the event through the notification to be like, "Hey, there's no event running anymore." So. Yeah, and I think it's one of those things that because like initially in, in like the, in the initial design and also how the design had translated over from Crusaders that the event notifi the event being through a notification um, was up there largely without a lot of other notifications mm -hmm. and then more and more notifications grew up there and it became and then we added more and more core features to the game that then got their own buttons and events have always been a core feature to the game. Uh, just when it <laughs> initially started, that that had been the one we didn't want to put core features up as like notifications yeah. at the top. Yeah. Um, and so I think it just made sense to have a per permanent button for it because it is a permanent core core feature in the game. Yeah. Chad is saying that uh, events 3.0 will have three buttons, one button <laughs> per event rework. <laughs> we don't have space for three buttons. <laughs> <laughs> just have buttons coming off the sides. Yeah. It'll be awesome. Perfect. You'll never. You won't be able to miss it. <laughs> Uh, next question here is from Garwar, again, who asks, are you ever going to update the offline gold calculation? Wasn't it created before there was offline progress, so it isn't even remotely similar? Um, so I think the offline gold calculation has gone through a series of sort of changes along with um, offline progress. I think certainly the, most, the earliest form was pretty primitive as far as like just sort of how many monsters per second the, the game thought you could kill at the highest area. Whereas I, th I think it, that had then evolved into something where it was keeping track of like the la number of monsters you killed over the last 60 seconds and using that as a like, sort of a mm -hmm. running total. Um, <sighs> I mean, as far as like, are we going to update that? I'm not sure that that's something that's like, unless I missed it, is something that's come up has been a concern. Um, I think the offline, I'm not sure if the offline, the current offline gold progress just sums up as you go during offline progress. And then it, once you get to that last area, that's when it just does like a, a summation of time based on what you were getting. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. because gold is, is exponential, right? Like gold, you, gold you're earning in earlier levels isn't super impactful except to just you know, level up your champions. Um, as long as you're getting enough to level, level them up high enough to be able to defeat monsters in the next level that offline progress skips to, you're, you're fine. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like it's that last time accumulation once you yeah. get a, a point where you're not progressing anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, th I thought that that had gotten updated alongside offline progress. Um, yeah, it wasn't something I was aware that this point. sort of needed further looking at. Yeah. But. Yeah. All right. Next question. This is from OG17. Uh, could the celebration legendary dismantle periods last for two full weeks? 
Uh, when dismantles are three months apart, having one week feels rushed on top of the event, trials, etc. And we don't even know when celebrations are coming ahead of time. Um, possibly. <clears throat> so I talked on last show. Not last week's show. Not next week's show. Uh, I talked on last week's show about... Uh, no, <laughs> I literally said it and then I messed it up. I talked on the last episode... Um, about how we really like to rework um, legendaries in some way that uh, that dismantle periods are no longer necessary. Um, and on a show, yes. Um, and I'm still kind of, I, I would still like to do that. But with that said, I, I appreciate that this is something that is more, um, uh, <coughs> that, that, that people would like dealt with now and not in the this mystical time in the future when we eventually get to redoing uh, the legendary system. And so I think this is something that we could look at doing for, uh, for the time being as a kind of stopgap measure. And, uh, and then we will, what do you, <laughs> and then we will, uh, and then when we eventually yeah, get around to reworking the legendary system, we can just uh, pull it out. I was just checking that a question of whether or not last week's episode was prime. <laughs> you had to, you had to Google. I was just is 121 it? prime. Listen, I didn't want to do math on stream. <laughs> you fail at your grade six times tables. Listen, you're the one who's got a prime issue. <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, this is from OG17. Uh, Elminster's final global perk caps at 10% damage per active potion. So 200% if you redundantly activate all standard potions. But he has an earlier perk that just gives everyone 200% all of the time. Could the potion perk be bumped up given its cost and position? Yeah, this is a fair question. Uh, I think generally when we're looking at um, like global perks, we're not looking at kind of a progression from from like the tier one perks up to the tier five perks. We're generally just looking at each of these, you know, getting to each of these gives you a bump of, you know, roughly X. Um, with that said, I mean, maybe that's something that we could, uh, the, the goal of that perk was to get people to, uh, if they want a boost of damage, to activate all their potions and use some of those excess potions, some of those 10,000 excess potions um, that they have sitting in their inventory uh, and give them some sort of perk for doing that. Uh, you know, maybe 10% isn't enough to really be all that compelling for that and, uh, and all that impactful, so maybe we could make that higher. Um, but in general, we're not looking at, um, at having uh, having the the per or the the patron um, or not patron uh, the blessings um, well I guess this is per patron perks um, but we're not looking at having them necessarily increase in power as you go up we're just looking at each of them being a sort of standard power bump when you get to them all right <coughs> next question uh, yeah the next question here is from foolish genius oh. 89 intercept asks Gotcha. Uh, who asks, question, is there anything the community can do to influence the priority order of the major announced features? Updated legendaries are high on my list, but it sounds like they won't be prioritized for a while. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, when we talk about major announced features, I think certainly <laughs> what, what does that look like in terms of of what list? Which list is that? <laughs> the the, ma um, the major announced features that people are talking about. I think in this case that he's referring to is the the various th kind of pie in the sky things that I've talked yes, about on stream. Yes. Um, um, I mean, certainly um, reiterating that those are features that you're looking for, so that you know it's a key uh, or it continues to remind Dustin and myself that this is something that that is a priority um, mm -hmm. can help for sure. I'm not entirely sure what like you're, you've got your nine list of nine things which I you haven't. I know. F I'm not sure if you fully ordered it yet in terms uh, of what the priorities ordered. look like. Yeah. <clears throat> as well as I know, like for example, the bench builder was a piece that we pulled out of the, the character the sheet champion update. champion profile rework, yes. Um, mainly so that we could get that to people sooner. Um, so, I mean, that might be one of those things where. You know, you can tell people approximately where things are, but it, it could very well be that some of the internal uh, other items on the list are not things that are you're ready to sort of announce 
mm -hmm. uh, largely or widely what they are. Um, which then would be sort of a confusing state of, why aren't you prioritizing this? It's like, well, we're working on this other thing we haven't shared yet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I think just continuing to remind us what priorities um, uh, you have um, can sort of help direct what priorities we end up looking at first. But no promises, of course, in terms of yeah. what internally is getting worked <laughs> on. Yeah. OK. Next question. question, probably the last question of today, uh, is also from Foolish Genius eighty uh, nine, asking: Now that we have alignment changing feats in the game, is it possible to allow multi class feats to add a second class to a champion? Uh, so I think it would be possible. Yes, um, we have been fairly we've tried to be fairly safe. Um, with our with some of the feats, so ones that change alignments, ones that add um, um, anything that touches class, race, um, alignment, and uh, another one which I can't think of right now. Um, but we have to be kind of careful uh, away or about those because we get into some weird situations where when we run into things that are exclusive. So alignment changing feats are, are a good example where we were initially thinking, or should we have ones that add an alignment so that the initial alignment still works? Because you run into situations where a champion is maybe buffed because they are of a certain alignment, and then you equip an alignment changing feat, and now they're no longer buffed, and you're like, wait, why does equipping this cheat or this feat make my DPS go down? <laughs> cheat. <laughs> yes, <laughs> feats are cheating. Um, <coughs> so I think we've been pretty careful about uh, those types of feats, any sort of feats that can basically make someone ineligible um, for for an ability or an adventure. Um, there are, I mean, obviously there's a couple stat feats that could have done that in the past. But uh, yeah, it's something we're being very careful about. It's not necessarily something we won't ever do, but it's something we're being careful about. So um, yeah, it, it'd certainly be possible to add multi-class feats. Uh, I don't think it's a priority for us to rush into right now. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened at some point in the future. OK. Well, it looks like that is all we've got time for today. Excellent. Uh, if we didn't get to your question this week, do not worry. We will get to your, to your question in our next episode, which is I'm not actually reading the script. <laughs> How does next it go? Week. I've only said this 120 times. You're not going on vacation again next week, right? Uh, no. Well, maybe after this episode. Whew. Uh, if we didn't get to your question, don't worry. You'll have another opportunity. We will be live again at this same time next week. Uh, before we sign off, though, we'd like to thank our, uh, I don't Mars might be quite tired this week, but our ti generally tireless mods, uh, Mars and Gabe. Uh, they're the ones who copy your questions into our questions doc and make things awesome in chat. So thanks to both of you. And of course, uh, thanks to all of you for hanging out, uh, ask, watching such Wow. Watching, <laughs> watching, watching us answer watching such, such great, great questions. questions. <laughs> watching the stream, asking such great questions, and for enjoying the game. Uh, because without you, we wouldn't get to do what we do. And we like what we do, according all to right. the script. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <sighs> My enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. I need a vacation. Uh, It's the episode that gets us canceled, Justin. <laughs> uh, right. I know what we do next. Oh, yeah, the hot, hot mic bit. It says so right here. Yep. So one day, I changed a light bulb, crossed the road, and walked into a bar. And that's when I realized that my whole life was a joke. <sighs> the script actually calls you to groan, not to sigh. Oh, that's sorry. Yeah. <laughs> eh, good try.